Welcome to my show, Crypto Express. In today's video, we know there was a Bitcoin halving and it aren't prices supposed to go up and there's so much speculation in the market right now and we know that speculation and emotion from everybody is what ultimately drives the charts. That is what drives the charts, is how everyone is feeling. And that's why it's important to understand what is going on and why people are feeling the way they are. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. So first off, Bitcoin is at 63,000. It's been wavering, okay? But that said, I'm going to show you a clip from Anthony Pompliano. He's a big thought leader in the space. And let me just play it for you. But basically, Bitcoin's 200-day moving average just hit a new all-time high. And Grayscale, you know, like the fund, the institutional fund, saw its first day of inflows so far since the Bitcoin ETFs were approved, it's been nothing but like outflows every day for Grayscale. They just had their first positive inflow, meaning new investment came in. So this is a really, really good indicator. And we know that alongside with the Hong Kong ETF being approved, this just really speaks of how Bitcoin's power and its, its, its technology um, are really spreading all over the world. So let me just play this for you. And this is important once again, because if you don't know any better and you're too focused on what's immediately happening in the market, you might be worried, right? Like why isn't Bitcoin more valuable? All these questions might be running through your brain. But if you can zoom out, as I always encourage you to do, then you'll see that actually, as Pompliano just said, Bitcoin's 200 day moving average just hit a new all time high. You always have to zoom out. You know, so let's just play this. He says it better than I do. Um, and hopefully this helps answer some questions for you. Welcome back to Squawk Box. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks now since Bitcoin's halving and the price action of the cryptocurrency has been, well, volatile is maybe the word. For more on that in the equity markets, I want to bring in Anthony Pompliano. He's the founder of Pomp Investments. Good morning to you. Good morning. So the halving happened. Uh, it's been volatile. I mean, we... I don't know if we can put the price up on the screen right now, but there was a period of time. What, did, what was the lowest it came down to at one point? 57. 57. Uh, it's moved back, but it hasn't moved back, obviously, to, to the heights. What do you make of what's happening here? Yeah, I, I think that the halving uh, price action is exactly what we should have expected. Historically, it runs up about 19% in the month before, and then it only goes up about 1%, 2% in the month after the halving. So we're kind of seeing about that. Um, okay. Last week, I think that Bitcoin sold off because people are realizing, wait, maybe the U.S. economy isn't as good as we thought it was. Maybe we're actually not going to get all of these rate cuts. If you look at prediction markets, we've seen they were pricing in five rate cuts. Now we're down to one. And so if we're not going to get those rate cuts, is that bad for assets that trade you know, in a risk environment? And so when we see that, though, all of a sudden we've retraced the entire sell off. Right. We're right back. And one of the most interesting data points is that GBTC, the world's largest Bitcoin fund, saw 78 yes. straight days of outflows once the ETFs got approved. Yes. Mm -hmm. On Friday, it had the first day of inflows, about $63 million. And so that doesn't mean that all of the selling is gone, but for 78 straight days, people were taking money out of that fund. And on Friday, they decided to start putting it back. We see the price rally. So what do you think that says about the overall scheme with, with Bitcoin and more importantly, the ETF world? Yeah, so whenever you see the ETFs get approved, right, I think everyone was like, oh, these institutions are just waiting to pour capital in. It takes time. They've got to go to their investment committees. They've got to talk to their clients. They've got to go through their processes. And, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, some of them are bureaucratic, and it's going to take some time. And so now we're starting to see these flows that are... Pers so I'm going to pause there because it at least answers the question, you know, and at least explains to us, you know, why it is that Bitcoin hasn't skyrocketed already. And this is because it's normal, you know, as soon as the having happened, there's just an adjustment period. And we know that I think it's about a month after, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's about a month after the having historically that Bitcoin, is it a month? It eventually, let's put it that way, doubles in price that like it doubles in price over what the miners have to pay 
to keep their mining machines going. So, and it just makes sense, right? Like if it costs you $5 to make a piece of bread, like a loaf of bread, you're going to sell it like hopefully for at least double, right? So it's just something like that. So if like electricity goes up, like you, maybe you don't charge double right away, but when that bill comes in, then you start to charge more, right? Because you just have to, it has to make sense. It's a business. So that just paints a picture of, of uh, why Bitcoin's price hasn't gone up yet. That said, we know that the Hong Kong ETFs were approved. Um, last week, was it? And it's amazing because essentially since they were approved, they've acquired 4,200 BTC since launch, which if you put it into perspective, you know, you can't, once again, you can't compare like the Hong Kong market to the U.S. market because they're just like not proportionate. They're just not proportionate. You know, the Hong Kong market is quite small, um, but proportionately how much they're investing into Bitcoin is a lot. Like is is a is a really big number. It's a number to be proud of. It's a very very big successful number. So, um, just to keep that in mind, this is just some more good news on uh, Bitcoin's you know spread all over the world. And this is just a chart I wanted to show you. It basically, sometimes it's good to see things visually, but this is since the beginning of time, um, since the ETFs were approved for Grayscale. You see every day was like outflows, 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 outflows for 78 days. And then, uh, was it like two days ago? Um, we had our first positive inflow day, which is amazing. It is amazing. All right. That said, we're going to segue into the value of money and why Bitcoin is so important in the grand scheme of things. I understand if you've been here in crypto for a long time, maybe this isn't so you know new to you, but it's still nevertheless so, so important to remember. And I'll show you um, some graphs in a minute, but it's just important to remember, you know, like Bitcoin is only going up in value, as you can see in the image. Gold is pretty much staying the same and fiat or traditional currencies like the US dollar or the peso are going down in value. And that's why this guy writes, the Bitcoin therapist, he says it's really this simple. This is why to invest in Bitcoin. Next, I just wanted to show you guys the US debt clock. Maybe it's not proportionate on my screen, but you can basically go to US, US debt, like the word debt, clock.org and it shows you the US's current debt in real time. It's wild. I mean, I don't even know how to say this number. It's like trillion. Is that right? 34 trillion? Or what comes after trillion? Quadrillion? That's how much in debt we are per citizen, about a hundred and three thousand a hundred and one hundred and twenty-five dollars. It's out of control, guys. It's really quite sad. I was watching, um, there's this like this viral video, I guess that's going around. I tried finding it, but I couldn't find the original source. And I have a lot to cover with you, so I didn't want to you know, add too much. But basically, it's this girl and she breaks down, I wish I could find it. Um, she breaks down how much in taxes everyone is actually really paying in the US. Um, and I don't mean this in any, like, I'm not trying to bash the U.S. You know, I love the U.S. Actually, I wish that, you know, things would get better over there. Um, you know, I left like five years ago now, almost. And I love, you know, I have such wonderful memories there, but this isn't a memory lane video, so I won't go into that. But, you know, it's just really sad what's happening the U.S. dollar is, I think it's lost 25% of its purchasing power, which we can see here. This is the purchasing power. You can go to fred.stlouisfed.org. I'll link this below as well, but it shows you that, you know, throughout the years, how much the U.S. dollar um, has, you know, how, how much it's been losing of its purchasing power. And you can see that where we are now in 2020, like basically 
it's been crashing since like since like the 19 like 1940 1945 like pretty much once it came off the gold standard because the US dollar used to be backed by gold you know because the US dollar is technically just a note um, but as soon as they decoupled them it's just money paper money backing paper money there's actually a really 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 good I didn't I don't have it let me see let's look it up video by the president of by the president of El Salvador speech and um, man he talks about the US dollar yeah, but even here in the United States in the most powerful country in the world even here it's happened America should listen to this word Okay, I won't play the whole thing for you, but I'll link this below. I'd encourage you to go watch this video. It's a very, very respectful delivery and analysis. And as he says, you know, like uh, a call for help and wake and, and awakening. Um, not to overuse that word, but, you know, because El Salvador was in ruins. It was one of the most dangerous nations in the world. And um, President Nayib Bukele... Um, when he came into office, you know, he had to fight like drug lords and gangs. Um, I don't know how he did it. Honestly, I feel like it must be a very interesting story, but incredible story. You know, they've managed with his administration to turn the country around. And now I believe they're backed by Bitcoin. Um, they have Bitcoin ATMs everywhere all over the nation. Uh, it's considered one of the safest countries in the world now. So they've done wonders. I feel like, you know, you do have to listen to whoever has a track record and can prove their success, even if they're new, you know, like we often want to listen to like the biggest, most powerful people, but sometimes, you know, it's like a David and Goliath story and the little guy rises up, you know, and this could be you, you know. This could be you, this could be, like, this is like me in many ways. It's, it's choosing to make a difference, to stand, and to um, change, to use your voice, you know, to believe that things can be different. And that this, this speech is so inspirational, but he basically um, explains how the U.S. dollar is backed <laughs> and it's just really 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 powerful but anyway he explains like this chart that we're looking at right now and it doesn't say it here on the chart but it's 25 percent the u.s dollar has lost 25 percent of, of its purchasing power that's scary that's dangerous and this leads me to this incredible very easy to understand but so powerful graphic you won't be able to see it with my face in the way, so I'll stop that. But it's by this, um, it's by Maria Hamilton, and she basically, it's just a graphic, right? You can see it. It says, like, in 2015, a house, the same house, you know, throughout several years, um, and it shows its appreciating value. So the house initially was worth $262,000. Three years later, it's worth $325,000. Three years later, it's worth $455,000. And then three years later, in like our present day, it's worth $582,000. So it shows how like the value of things is going up because of inflation, right? But then below it, you'll see it shows how many Bitcoin you needed in each of these years, every three years, to buy that house that's going up in value. And what's amazing, as you can see on my screen, is that when it was worth only $262,000, you needed 1,225 Bitcoin to buy that house. Fast forward to the, to, to the future, to the present day, the house that is now worth almost double what it was before, $582,000, is now worth and or purchasable by 8.9 Bitcoin. So while the price is going up, the amount of Bitcoin required is going down. 
and that shows you how amazing and how just incredible even though the chart does this on the regular you know it's scary you're just like it's not going up <laughs> I thought Bitcoin was supposed to go to the moon you know and and that's because once again you have to zoom out and see how throughout the years it's already proven a track record you know and and from here I mean in the next if we follow this logic in the next three years you know it should be like about four Bitcoin <laughs> approximately 4.5 Bitcoin or less or less or one Bitcoin to buy this powerful very very powerful stuff but okay that said we're just going to very briefly go over some uh, some more drama um, unfortunately the SEC or the like securities like the like Department of the US um, has been going after more crypto companies and this tweet it kind of makes fun of it you know it's like they went after Uniswap saying you know like Uniswap was saying like they're not an exchange you know and the SEC is like yes you are an exchange Uniswap is a DEX it's decentralized it's just a, like a tool a platform you know um, and then they went after Coinbase and then Coinbase is filed legally as an exchange you know, it has a license, but the SEC was like, no, you're a broker dealer. So it's like they're reading between lines and trying to find like the needle in the haystack all the time on what, what they are and what they're not. At the same time, as I say this, um, I could see how the SEC, while maybe they have a vendetta and they're out to get crypto companies, um, mainly because they feel like they're losing control, you know, like, like a parent. I think I said this in the last video, like if a parent, if a controlling parent all of a sudden has a child, you know, that's like a prodigy and, you know, is growing up too fast or, you know, claiming its independence too fast, chances are that parent might not like it, right? And so might just want to like tell it no, no, no for like everything. You know, I was raised this way in many ways. <laughs> so you can see how I'm using an example relevant to me. Um, so I could see how maybe there is this like that side of the SEC where they simply don't want Bitcoin or crypto to succeed because it takes power away from them and it's happening too fast. And, um, you know, maybe there's just that general resistance to change. And lack of understanding, you know, so if we're neutral about it, maybe that's why the SEC is going after so many crypto companies. On the other hand, um, you know, it's also possible that they're going after each, you know, crypto company or project, that, you know, that, that's a little different in nature. Um, and telling them, you know, that like finding the fine print, you know, and telling them, what they forgot to include in their licenses, you know, like maybe they're doing that also because maybe it's just true. You know, crypto in many ways does reinvent the wheel. And so chances are that while maybe, you know, like Coinbase, you know, filed its licenses to be an exchange, maybe there's an aspect of their business. Maybe you can hear that siren outside. I'm still in Bangkok, guys, and it's a bit loud, even though I'm quite high up in the clouds. <laughs> um, yeah, so maybe there's aspects of Coinbase's business model that makes it sound like it's a broker dealer. You know, who knows? Who knows? Because crypto in many ways does sort of like merge and reinvent business. So who knows? You know, because now the news is, as you can see, um, Robin Hood, the exchange, right? Like there's that big famous movie that's called Eat the Rich on Netflix. I really recommend you go watch them. It explains a lot about like macroeconomics in that video. It's very, very good and how the stock market moves and how rich people think as well. Um, very educational. But anyway, so now they're going after Robin Hood. Like that's the news right now. And, um, and that's really interesting because Robinhood has done 
so much to be compliant. Um, they've even sold, what I understand is they've even like force sold many of their uh, customers account, like different crypto holdings when the market was crashing, just in, in like the best interest of their customers um, to be in compliance with the SEC. So I don't know, there's a lot to unpack there, so I, I won't get into it, but I just know that this really kind of shook the space a little bit because Robinhood has, is, you know, has been quite like compliant. And so anyway, I guess the SEC is now calling them a clearing agency. So long story short, it has many people in the crypto space thinking that the U.S. government and the SEC, that they're out to get the crypto space, that they're trying to create like fear and terror because it's like war once again, you know, and one of the main tactics the enemy will use is to distract you, distract you and make you afraid so that they can go by and advance on you while you're scared, right? And so there's many, many theories on this. It does look like that is what's happening, but the truth is we don't know. And the truth is that we don't want to give it more attention than it's th than this. And we're going to move on here very fast because, um, because see, they went after Uniswap. You know, they went after, see, this is, they can't stop suing crypto companies. Like, honestly, it doesn't deserve that much attention. Like it doesn't, it doesn't because that's the whole point. Like they want us to be afraid and to not invest in crypto and if you're American of course you know like be very very careful um, you can only use DEXs decentralized exchanges um, yeah I like you do want to be very very careful you know I know many Americans are leaving the US um, I didn't leave the US because of crypto I left because I fell in love <laughs> and I got a job out here in Thailand but, and then that's it, you know, it just kind of became the next almost five years of my life. Um, but it may not be a bad idea to look into relocating. Um, anyway, that's a different topic, but let's keep moving. So that said, a look at the markets. Um, this is today. Let's refresh to make sure we're looking at the latest information. Okay, so this is the latest information. The market is, it looks about 50-50. Some good projects are pumping. Many are not pumping. Um, this is, but on the weekly, it's quite green. Um, it's quite bullish. Some projects up tremendously. So it looks like the market is tried to recover quite a bit. You can see that dog with hat is up 36.29%, render almost 50%. So it looks like the market really did like a good 30 to 40% comeback um, this last week. There was another chart I was gonna include, but it just, it's too much information for this video, but it shows how in general, the crypto altcoin market cap or total market capitalization, so all the tokens in circulation times their price. It showed how the general market cap of the crypto altcoins are like really on the comeback, like they're really, really taking off, um, which is amazing. It's amazing. There have been some differences in the way this bull run is unfolding, even though we haven't fully hit parabola or like parabolic action yet um yeah very interesting like mainly that you know like meme coins are really leading the way um usually it's bitcoin then altcoins and then degen coins but it looks like meme coins being that they represent culture and like em cultural like emotion and like advocacy are taking on a whole shape and category of their own. So that is very interesting. So we'll see how this crypto uh, bull run unfolds. But that said, we're going to talk about AI. 
because I have a strong, strong reason um, and reasons to believe that AI is going to be, aside from meme coins, as I talked about, is it's going to be about AI. I made a whole video on Bitensor. You know, we know that based AI is a contender or like competition. Um, and that's what this, this tweet says from Kyle. He says, AI summer is coming. You know, don't say you haven't been warned. How do I know this? Study the recovery, AI coins recovering fastest. And meme coins. NVIDIA earnings, two weeks away. So NVIDIA is going to be reporting its earnings. I'll show you here in a second. AI uh, sector volume growth percentage. Top performers for the past 24 hours are altcoins. The narrative is staring you right in the face. It's so true. It's so, so true. See, NVIDIA is leading earnings season even before reporting results. Microsoft, Meta, and Tesla announced significant investments in AI infrastructure, which benefit NVIDIA. Investors must wait until May 22nd. So that is in what? Like two weeks to see NVIDIA's results. But you know, that's the way the market works. When it knows news is coming, the price will kind of rally, you know? Sorry, I have something in my eye. Anyway, I had to go see an eye doctor today. Anyway, so some more amazing AI news, and it really just points in the direction of how AI is the narrative that's going to be driving, is one of the narratives that's going to be driving, like, a lot of the momentum this bull run. And that is with Apple. So it says, join us online for the biggest developer event of the year. They're going to be unveiling the latest Apple platforms, technologies, all these things. And I guess they have some big AI announcement. We have Microsoft investing $100 billion in generative artificial intelligence. Um, yeah, so that could really send the market soaring. So we have Microsoft. Okay, so we have NVIDIA. We have Apple with some huge AI announcements. We have Microsoft. Then we have Amazon announcing Q. It's generative AI assistant that virtually does it all. Makes data more accessible, writes code, answers questions, generates content, solves problems, manages AWS, resources and takes action with built-in security. I'm very, very curious about this. I used to work for Amazon um, as a, it's complicated, it doesn't matter, as a technical, like literature quality assurance person in Portuguese. Anyway, um, yeah, so we have Amazon announcing its Q virtual assistant, more AI news. And then we have ChatGPT5 with its release date, features, and prices arriving soon. And we all remember when Sora, remember Sora, like the uh, speech to video technology? It's not open yet or available to the market yet, I don't believe. But just the news, just that little video clip that went viral, just Google Sora, S-O-R-A, that sent markets soaring. So, yeah, like with all this AI news, we can only imagine what's to come. And then here's a breakdown I just wanted to show you. Like if you go to CoinGecko and you go to AI, they have a sector. You see where I'm hovering with my mouse? We are over AI right now. These are the top trending AI tokens. Um, yeah, and you can basically see good investment opportunities if you go to market cap where I am hovering here. Um, of course, you have to do a little bit of reading because, you know, the big market caps, they're not going to give you a whole lot of like pump, a mental like pump power for your investment because they're already almost all, like it's already almost all fully diluted. Like there isn't, 
there there aren't going to be like it's it's just too saturated so you're not going to be able to like capitalize so much on investing in it um so what you would want to do is you would want to find a smaller cap right you go to the market cap you'd want to go to one that has a smaller um market cap and then you'd want to compare it its technology to one of these large cap successful projects. So we know Fetch AI is successful, Render, BitTensor, The Graph, Singularity Net, all of these. AOs, I love AOs. I helped take them to market. They have some big announcements coming. I know Ocean Protocol is a beautiful one. We'll check out here in a second. But that's what you'd want to do. That's why you want to invest in new AI projects that have at least made it to this list because it tells you they've gained enough traction to be here. But you want to go for the smaller ones, smaller market caps, if you want the opportunity to make more money, like make larger gains. But you'd also want to hold some of these bigger ones if you can afford it. Um, just because they're gonna, they're your blue chips, you know, it's, they're like your Microsoft, your Facebooks, your Amazons that are still going to go up a lot in value, but it's going to be a little slower. Although who knows with this bull run, it might be fast. But all right. So some of these smaller cap or smaller market capitalization projects that might be interesting for you to check out would be like this one, like net mind token just pause guys if you're interested and then go look them up zero one labs i got these from my sources um based ai i've spoken extensively about based ai um it's a it's similar to Bitensor, um which is a little much to explain in this video but i made a whole video on it if you want to go check it out but this is like a gem. This is gold. And there's a tweet here. This one I wanted to share with you guys because based AI, the token I just shared with you a minute ago, has a correlation or a connection with Pepe coin. The one you see here on the right hand side of my window, he says, guys, Pepe coin has to be one of the most obvious plays, right? Like investment strategies, this cycle. Just too much bullish evidence. One, it's a meme coin with utility. Up to 80% supply burn. That's great. That means it's going to go up in value. Two, base AI powered by Pepe coins. You see? You can actually stake your Pepe coins and air, get airdropped based AI tokens. I'm doing this right now. I haven't even seen <laughs> how many I've been airdropped yet. But I know I've been doing this for a while. Kekbot. We should talk about Kekbot. Kekbot is pretty awesome and it's also intertwined with Pepe Coin. Kekbot, I'm going to look into personally for my own investments. It is a bot. And I will link this, these, all this information, all these tweets in the video in the description below so you can go click on it and look at this exact tweet that I'm, ta I'm looking at here because Kekbot is a text to execution bot that allows you to move all your tokens around by speech. Powerful, and it's powered by Pepecoin. And it will also be burning Pepecoin supply. And then also you'll see here Vitalik, you know, like the godfather of Ethereum, also gave it some, a mention. See, that's what this tweet says. Vitalik's last three blog posts since he liked his seven-year-old tweet about Pepecoin has been number one, decentralization and AI. So these are the last like three blog posts by Vitalik. The first one has been on decentralization in AI. The second has been on meme coin utility and now. Um, and then third, um, FHE, uh, which is a certain form of like process or code it's a little complicated but it's pretty cool um yeah so anyway vitalik is backing 
Pepecoin. See, this is his tweet from, can you see my screen? From 2017, he was talking about Pepecoin. Oh my gosh. And of course, he's cryptic about it. He says, before or after the Enterprise Pepecoin Alliance. See? And then Elon, just to back up my AI narrative, Elon also made a tweet a year ago in March, and all he wrote was one word. Based AI. Spoke, like, written exactly the way based AI, like, has coined its branding, based AI. And of course, these guys know about things like long before they come to market, you know? Next, we have Node AI. We saw them on the list, the breakdown of tokens a moment ago of AI tokens I was showing you. See on this list, we have, where are you? Node AI. Anyway, it's here somewhere, guys. But that said, this is the next small market cap opportunity to invest into an AI project that will still give you the opportunity to like make massive gains when the bull run like takes off and like parabolic, like parabolically. Um, I've just been in Thailand for too long, so my English escapes me sometimes. But anyway, check them out, Node AI. And I believe you can get your own node and you can, yeah, start monetizing it. But there's a lot to cover here. Very, very cool. And this tweet just kind of wraps it all up for us. But he says, the strongest, the strongest narrative in crypto this year has been AI. And I don't think that changes anytime soon. GPU, or what allows, like, the computer chips, like, to run... And, and do all the AI complicated algorithms. It says, GPU is my strongest conviction in the sector for good reason. And that's what these AI projects decentralize, is the GPU power for AI to run off of. It's really amazing. It says, the team has been working relentlessly to deliver value for holders. Oh, so he's talking about a project. It's very interesting. But okay. Oh yeah, I was talking about Node AI. Amazing. Next, the last piece of news and then we're wrapping it up. But you know how we saw Fetch AI on the list of the top crypto uh, projects list? Well, Fetch AI that was on there, Singularity Net and Ocean Protocol, which is a smaller market cap AI project. They all plan to like create an alliance. <laughs> Amazing. And I guess they're launching this ASI token to launch in May. So I ima imagine if you're holding Fetch AI or Singularity Net or Ocean Protocol, you're pr probably, who knows, I don't know, okay? You're probably maybe gonna get airdrop some of these tokens, these ASI tokens, or have some benefit in getting into it. And that's the benefit of getting into some of these blue chip, small market cap projects early because because you never know what's going to unfold and the type of benefits you'll get by holding these tokens as an early token holder, you know? Amazing. And then the last project is Palm AI. It's basically an AI agent, like having your own agent, your own AI robot that can do things for you. So this is very interested, very interesting. I'm interested in this one for myself, for helping scale up my business processes, which have been a little slow lately. I know I haven't made so much content lately, but it's because of my pup that you can see in the background. There he is, he's waking up. Um, we, I've just been, yeah, trying to find some solutions and answers for him. And I think we found some. Um, yeah, he's had like nah, so many scans and seen so many doctors here in Bangkok, but it looks like we're gaining some traction and he's about to undergo some really advanced diagnostic um, analysis. Let me know if you're interested in these because what I've discovered is that they often 
like the technology that gets to dogs for cancer screening has already been created and is already being, you know, like produced for humans first. So it's off topic a little bit, but maybe this is for somebody. And if it is, let me know because I actually have a different YouTube channel, my personal one. And I was going to make a video on this because I think it could help a lot of people. But anyway, I hope you found this video educational. Um, I hope I didn't share too much. And I hope, if anything, it lets you know where you should be thinking to put your money into. And you should just know, you know, it's from now up until September that we're in a bit of a quiet sideways motion. But also remember that with the Bitcoin ETFs being you know, approved globally, that this brings in a whole other new factor into the equation. And we just don't know how that's going to affect the market. Okay. Um, but news drives the market. So this should, you know, let us know and be prepared for anything. So it's a time to review your portfolio. It's a time to, you know, buy Bitcoin because it's being bought up like crazy. And we know that now that the halving has, uh, has passed, it's going to double in price. Like it's just mathematically it is. Um, and we have sovereign wealth funds and families and Saudis and very rich people all over the world buying Bitcoin. So yeah, I think I heard somewhere that there isn't enough Bitcoin for every single millionaire on the planet to even own one. So just to give you an idea on how scarce it is. But anyway, guys, that said, that's a wrap. I love you very much. And I will be here tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be a lot more consistent now that I have pretty much hopefully gotten to the end of this deep research phase that I've been in for my pup. He moved behind me. <laughs> Can you see him? <laughs> Cute baby. Anyway, I love you guys, and I will see you guys here tomorrow. Ciao.